Have you ever wondered what it means to be financially independent? It's a question that tickles the back of many minds yet seems so elusive like trying to catch smoke with bare hands. But let's unravel this mystery together. Financial independence in its simplest form means having enough income to pay for your living expenses for the rest of your life without having to work full time. It's the moment when your finances aren't causing you sleepless nights and you're not enslaved by the ticking clock of monthly bills. It's when your money works for you, not the other way around. Now isn't that a sweet melody to the ears? But wait, you might be thinking, isn't financial independence a luxury reserved for the rich and famous? The answer is a resounding no. Financial independence isn't about owning a yacht or a private island, although that does sound tempting. It's about having control over your time and choices. It's about the freedom to do what you want, when you want, without the gnawing worry of financial constraints. Think of it like this. Imagine you're a bird in a cage. The cage represents your financial obligations, the bills, the loans, the rent. Now imagine if someone left the cage door open. You can fly out, explore and return when you want to. That open door, my friends, is financial independence. Let's take Jane, for instance. She's not a millionaire. She's a school teacher who loves her job. But she's also a smart saver and investor. Jane has built a nest egg that lets her take a year off to travel or pursue a hobby if she chooses to. Jane is financially independent, and if Jane can do it, so can you. It's not about how much you earn, but how well you manage and grow what you earn. Financial independence isn't a dream, it's a journey, and every journey begins with a single step. So lace up your shoes, folks, we're about to embark on a thrilling adventure towards financial freedom. Now you may be asking, how can I start my journey to financial independence? The answer is simple, by creating a financial plan. In the world of finance, a plan is your best friend. It's like a GPS for your money, guiding you to your financial goals. So let's dive right into it. First, you need to set clear, realistic financial goals. Are you saving for a new car, a house, or maybe an around-the-world trip? Or maybe your goal is to retire at 55? Whatever it is, be specific and precise. Write it down. It's not just a goal anymore, it's a promise to yourself. Next, you need to understand your income and expenses. It's like the law of the financial jungle. You can't spend more than you earn. Well, unless you have a money tree, but let's face it, most of us don't. So take a good look at your income and list down all your expenses. Yes, even that morning coffee counts. Now let's talk about budgeting. It might sound like a chore, but trust me, it's more like a treasure map. It shows you where your money goes and helps you control your spending. A good budget is flexible, realistic, and most importantly, it works for you. And no, you don't have to cut out all the fun, just budget for it. Sticking to a budget can be challenging. But remember, it's all about discipline. It's like going to the gym. You don't see results in a day, but consistency pays off. Find ways to reduce unnecessary expenses. Maybe you can start by cooking at home more often or buy that designer bag when it's on sale. And finally, review and adjust your financial plan regularly. Life is unpredictable, and so are your finances. Your plan should be flexible enough to adapt to changes. Remember, a good financial plan is like a roadmap. It shows you the way forward and helps you avoid any financial potholes along the way. So, buckle up and let's drive towards financial independence together. Now that we've got a clear financial plan, it's time to talk about the power of saving and investing. Imagine saving as a sturdy lifeboat. It's there to keep you afloat when the financial tide gets rough. The first step is building an emergency fund. An emergency fund is like your financial superhero, swooping in to save the day when unexpected bills pop up. Aim to save enough to cover three to six months of living expenses. Now let's talk about investing. If saving is your lifeboat, then investing is your sailboat, propelling you towards your financial goals. Investing involves putting your money to work for you. It's like planting seeds today and watching them grow into a lush garden over time. But how does investing work? Well, when you invest, you're buying a small piece of a company or a loan to a government or corporation. You might be thinking, wait, I can own a piece of a company? Absolutely. That's what buying stocks is all about. Stocks represent ownership in a company and can potentially yield high returns, but they come with higher risk. Bonds, on the other hand, are like IOUs. When you purchase a bond, you're essentially lending money to an entity, like a corporation or government, with the promise they'll pay you back with interest. Bonds are generally considered lower risk, but they also offer lower potential returns compared to stocks. And then there are mutual funds. Think of them as a basket filled with a mix of stocks, bonds, and other investments. Mutual funds let you diversify your investments, which can help spread out and potentially lower your risk. 
Now remember, investing isn't about getting rich quick. It's a long-term game that requires patience, persistence, and a little bit of courage. But the rewards can be significant, helping you grow your wealth over time and sail smoothly towards your financial goals. Think of saving and investing as your financial GPS. They'll help guide you to your destination of financial independence. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, debt. How can we achieve financial independence if we're buried in debt? Now don't let the word debt scare you. It's like a spider. Sure, it's terrifying when it's crawling up your leg, but once you understand it, you can deal with it effectively. One way to manage your debt is through the snowball method. Picture a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering more snow and speed as it goes. That's you, tackling your smallest debt first and gaining momentum as you knock each one out. You'll feel a sense of accomplishment as you cross each debt off your list, and before you know it, you'll be snowboarding down the debt-free slopes. Now, if the snowball method is the tortoise in the race, the avalanche method is definitely the hare. This strategy involves paying off your highest interest debts first. It's like chopping off the head of the debt beast. While it might not give you the quick wins that the snowball method does, it will save you the most money in the long run. Think of these strategies as your financial superpowers. You're no longer a mere mortal facing a mountain of debt. You're a debt-slaying superhero, armed with the snowball or avalanche method. But remember, the goal here isn't just to eliminate debt. It's to free up your money so you can put it to work. Imagine your dollars as tiny employees. Right now they're stuck in the debt factory, but they could be in the savings and investment department working overtime to build your wealth. So, as you can see, managing debt isn't about depriving yourself. It's about making your money work smarter, not harder. It's about turning that terrifying spider into a tiny harmless bug. Just like in a game of chess, managing your debt is all about making strategic moves. So get out there and checkmate your debt. Your financial independence is waiting. Now that we've armed you with the basics of financial independence, what's next? Well, dear listeners, we've embarked on quite the financial journey today. We've mapped out the road to financial independence, and it's paved with many important elements. Let's take a moment to recap these key points, shall we? Firstly, we delved into the importance of building a financial plan. Remember, a good financial plan is like a GPS. It guides you to your destination. But instead of leading you to that fancy restaurant downtown, it's directing you towards a future of financial freedom. And who wouldn't want to dine at that table? Then we discussed budgeting techniques. Like a great diet plan, budgeting isn't about restricting what you can enjoy, it's about making the most of what you have. So, instead of cutting out all the financial calories, we're just trimming the fat. And trust me, your wallet will thank you for it. Next, we ventured into the exciting world of saving and investing. These are the power tools in your financial toolbox. With saving, you're securing your present. With investing, you're building your future. And together, they're like Batman and Robin, fighting off the villains of financial instability and insecurity. And lastly, we tackled the often daunting topic of debt management. But remember, debt is not a life sentence. It's just a hurdle on the path to financial freedom. With the right strategies, you can leap over it like an Olympic athlete and land firmly on the track to wealth. Now it's time for you to take these lessons and apply them in your life. Start your journey towards financial independence today. It might seem like a daunting marathon ahead, but every step you take gets you closer to the finish line. Remember, the journey to financial independence is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Start running today and you'll be crossing the finish line before you know it.